Coming up next, a not guilty verdict for the sailor accused of setting fire to the USS Bonham Richard. We're live with what's next in the case. A one-year-old girl killed by an alleged drunk driver is remembered by family. More on that and what happened during today's arraignment. What gives with these incredibly high gas prices overnight? Drivers say they are sick of the excuses and so is the president. Thank yous, decades in the making. We'll take you inside today's Honor Flight. And the San Diego Honda dealers surprise an SDSU professor with a random act of helpfulness. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A 21-year-old sailor has been found not guilty of setting fire to the USS Bonham Richard. The question tonight is, what happens next? Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. As CBS 8's David Gopperson reports, a military attorney involved in the case, at least previously, says that he doubts the Navy will try to charge anyone else. I am so grateful that this is finally over. It's been a long two years. Ryan Mays can finally smile after a military judge handed down a not guilty verdict this morning on arson charges filed in the fire that destroyed the USS Bonham Richard. I am looking forward to starting over. I'm thankful to the judge who heard the evidence and cleared my name. And thank you to those of the media who tried to tell my real story. It remains unclear whether Mays will leave the Navy Military attorney Gary Barthel previously represented Mays during a preliminary hearing. Unfortunately, I think his name will forever be linked to this case. I think it's best for him and probably for the Navy uh, that he separate, um, but we'll see what happens with that. The Navy still believes the cause of the fire in July 2020 was arson. Though May's defense team tried to show it could have been accidental, sparked by lithium ion batteries or hazardous materials in the lower vehicle storage area of the ship. Barthel says he doubts anyone else will be prosecuted. I don't think that the Navy's going to pursue this any further. I think the Navy's obligation is to look at what was the cause of this fire. Uh, the fact that there were hazardous materials stored down in the lower V, that the lower V became a junkyard, I would hope that those would be the lessons learned to avoid future fires like this. Prosecutors relied on one key witness who said he saw Mays go into the lower V area right before the fire started. And they argued Mays was disgruntled after dropping out of Navy SEAL training. But it was not enough to convict. The fact that he was a cocky young sailor uh, doesn't mean that he set a fire on the ship. It, in fact, it made him a target. We're out here live at Naval Base San Diego. Uh, Mays broke down in tears in the courtroom when that verdict was read. He did not answer questions from reporters when he came outside. And David, so does Ryan Mays have any recourse now against the Navy? For example, can he file a lawsuit to try and recoup legal expenses here? The short answer is no. Uh, I spoke to a legal expert today and, and he told me that Mays would have to file a malicious prosecution lawsuit and he simply does not have any grounds to do that at this point. Now the attorneys representing him during the court martial were paid for by the U.S. government. Well, we'll see what happens next with Seaman Ryan Mays. It's hard to imagine him just going back to work from, for the Navy after this. David Gofferson reporting live for us. Thanks, David. The San Diego Sheriff's Department is asking for your help tonight to find this 15 year old girl from Spring Valley. Aileen Mitchum was reported missing one week ago after she gathered a few personal items and disappeared. According to her family, she left a note saying she was running away. Aileen is five feet four, 160 pounds with hazel eyes and green dyed hair. Here are some photos of her. If you believe that you've seen her, you're asked to please call the San Diego Sheriff's Department. The man accused of driving drunk, killing a one-year-old girl, then just driving off, is pleading not guilty. Tonight, that driver is facing charges, including murder. The family of the little girl, Annalie, was there for the arraignment. So was CBS 8's Shannon Handy. She's live downtown with that and a fundraiser held in Annalie's honor. Annalie's family was at today's arraignment right after they came together in Logan Heights for a fundraiser. For them, the most important thing right now is to support each other and ensure Annalie is laid to rest in a way she deserves. 
When tragedy strikes, it's common to see a community come together. That's exactly what happened Friday as family, friends, even strangers gathered in the backyard of a Logan Heights home where a food fundraiser was held for 19-month-old Anna Lee Rodarte Navarro. It feels like we have joy because there's people here helping and caring, but there's still that pain. Amanda Martinez is Annalie's aunt. She says the little girl was full of life. To have it end the way it did is devastating. She would brighten your day. You know, she's a baby. She was just one. And to just drive off when you hit a one-year-old baby, you are a true monster. The crash happened Saturday evening in City Heights. Anna Lee was outside her grandparents' home when police say 45-year-old Margarito Angeles Vargas was driving under the influence and struck her without stopping. This cell phone video shows a neighbor confront Vargas, telling him, you hit a little girl. Vargas can be heard saying, you're crazy, and then speeds off. He was arrested a short time later. This morning, he was arraigned on several charges, including felony DUI, hit and run, driving on a suspended license, and second-degree murder. CBSA has learned Vargas has a prior DUI from 2016, which is why this case carries the added murder charge. When a person has been previously convicted of a DUI, they are typically advised of the danger to human life that driving under the influence of alcohol or drug poses. As a part of that case, they will also be advised that they can be charged with murder if they commit a future DUI and cause the death of another person. Vargas faces 15 years to life and is being held without bail. His ex-court appearance is October 7th. As for Annalie's family, they'll continue to show up in court, saying they want Vargas to see just how much she was loved. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help pay for funeral costs. For information on that, just go to CBS8.com and click on this story. Thanks, Shannon. An unstable slope in Orange County is causing big problems tonight, stopping train service heading north of Oceanside. Experts say the movement beneath the seaside tracks in San Clemente has become too dangerous for any passenger trains to cross. Train service is now suspended between Orange County and San Diego County, cutting San Diego's tracks off from the rest of the country, at least when it comes to passenger trains. It's not clear yet whether freight trains will still move through slowly. Metrolink and Amtrak will not resume until the slope movement has stopped. No word on how long that could take. The coaster train service between San Diego and Oceanside will continue. Governor Gavin Newsom has less than six hours tonight to sign all the bills that are still on his desk. He has until midnight, and in just the last 24 hours, he signed more than 100 bills. Our political reporter Morgan Reiner has been tracking some of the bigger ones for us. There are about 100 bills remaining on Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. Now, I can't get through all of them in the next few minutes, but one of the big ones would decriminalize jaywalking. Governor Gavin Newsom vetoed a similar bill last year, saying that it could be dangerous. California already has the highest fatal pedestrian rate, but those in favor of it say that those tickets disproportionately impact people of color and that low-income communities have far fewer crosswalks. The governor started off this week with hundreds hundreds of bills on his desk. It's been impressive that he has in literally a week's time uh, uh, whittled down from about 650 bills to now fewer than 100. Longtime lobbyist Chris McKelly tracks the bills on the governor's desk. Certainly in the last 24 hours, the governor has signed a significant number of bills and some very high profile ones from uh, the sealing of certain criminal records and uh, expanding a lot of new laws, including one that would make California essentially a sanctuary state for uh, people who are seeking gender affirming care. Scott Wiener's bill, a controversial one, protects patients, doctors and parents who seek care for their transgender kids. One bill he signed uh, today, which would increase the disability payments for uh, fairly low wage uh, income earners in California. Political analyst Steve Swat explains why he finds it interesting that Newsom signed a bill that would raise the paid leave for low income Californians from 70% of their wages to 90% of their wages. Made a you know, fairly strong case when he has vetoed some bills or signed some other bills that cost is a factor. And he is very concerned about 
uh, the California budget moving forward. The governor vetoed a handful of bills because of that same reasoning in recent days. The governor vetoed a mandatory kindergarten in California. And a lot of people were pushing for this, but he cited cost as an issue on this. Another would have limited the use of solitary confinement. What else is still on the governor's desk? Well, there is a very controversial bill that would punish doctors and other medical professionals for providing dis or misinformation on COVID-19. Those in favor of it say that it could have saved lives, but those against it say that it will ruin the individual relationships that doctors have with their patients.